Okay, so um, let's begin. Uh, hi everyone, um, my name is Jeff Lee and I'm from IT.com, China. It's really a great pleasure to be here to introduce our solution for small file storage in Swift. And here is the agenda. First, I'm going to introduce the background. Why do we want to and have to optimize Swift instead, to, instead of switching to other systems? Uh, next, I will introduce the blob engine intended for small file. What will be exempt includes the object durability, uh, object locating, and replica consistency. Uh, also, the volume compression will be introduced too. Next, uh, some performance uh, data will be presented based, uh, produced by the SS bench. And finally, I will give a short explanation of the roadmap. So who are we? Uh, Foundings in 2010, ICE has now become the leading video stream provider in China. <clears throat> we provide us the video service for all kinds of devices, such as the PCs, tablets, and phones, and also the TV sets. Uh, hundreds of millions of users uh, watching billions of hours long video in, in our, our service. And the daily active user of our mobile app has uh, reached the 115 million app. Uh, from the previous introduction, it's easier to understand that we, we need a efficient and uh, efficient storage infrastructure with low, with low cost. So why Swift is our choice? First, it's simple. That means it's easier to operate and, and, and maintain. And since it runs on common servers, so we don't need to purchase uh, expensive devices. We don't even need a, a red car. Actually, we started to use Swift in 2012 for some small workload. But now it's becoming more and more important in our cooperation. This is the biggest use case at the moment. The, from the diagram, we can see how Swift provided the storage infrastructure to video transcoding systems, which is very critical in our organization. Uh, it's worth mentioning that, mentioning that uh, the transcoding system is a uh, complicated system. And sometimes uh, you want to process the data as quickly as possible. So we uh, developed some actual middlewares for for the transition system to process the data in the, our in object server directly. And it's really easy for us to develop the middlewares. There are also uh, some other use cases. During the transcoding, multiple uh, snapshots will be taken on the video file for various purposes. After the transcoding, the original files will be, will be accessed in very infrequently, so we archive them with erasure coding. There are also some other services uh, provided by ICE. For example, Pawpaw is our social product, uh, which will produce uh, a lot of image every day. So we do have a strong demand on massive uh, on uh, efficient, uh, massive small file stories. Uh, but we found that the right performance degrade badly in our infrastructure. So uh, we just run some breakdown benchmark. 
and it turned out that the replication storage engines contributes most of the latency. As we know, there are currently two storage engines shipped with the Swift. One is the erasing coding, just as we mentioned before. Uh, it's suitable for the code data. The other is the replication engine, in which every replica is saved as a file in the POSIX file system, such as XFS. And the metadata meta will be saved as extended attributes. Here's a simple example showing how a replica is organized in the file system. The red part is configurable, and the number three is the partition number. The yellow part is actually a two-level directory structure. The parent is the suffix of the trial, which is calculated from the object ID, namely the combination of the account, container, and object names. And finally, we can see that the data file is named with the time step. Here's, uh, the diagram showed the pipeline of the replication engine. First, uh, when the uh, storage engine is handling a write request, it first will check if the objects exist or not. Then a temporary file will be created to hold the data and the meta of the objects. After the object is flushed into discs, a necessary directory will be created because we know that the, the directory is at multi, multiple levels, so we need to create the, the whole uh, structure. And finally, the temporary file will be renamed with the time step. From the, from the diagram, it's uh, easy to understand why the application is inadequate with small file storage. First, uh, it requires, um, requires heavily node uses. As we know, every file or directory will occupy the uh, inode. When, so when the object grows, uh, is, it will be difficult for the operating system to cache the directory entry in the memory. That will cause the performance de degradation badly. Second, you need uh, some heavy random I.O. Heavy random I.O. Uh, cause. For example, you first need to check if the object exists or not. Then create a temporary file, flush the object, create the multiple uh, directory and link them. If you use uh, uh, some trace tool, such as strace, to trace the, the replication engine, you could find that multiple I.O. relative uh, system call will be issued uh, during every write request. And finally, the whole pipeline is closed uh, in, uh, synchronously. This um, is the initial attempt we tried uh, to solve the issues. First, we expand the, the cluster with more nodes, more, more hardware. It did help for, uh, for a while, but uh, the performance fell back when the number of objects grows. And expanding the cluster will cause, uh, will cause the utilization of the disk low, lower because and the issue will be more serious when the disk is large. We also try to run the uh, Swift in the PyPy, in the PyPy in a long time. Actually, we now run several clusters in PyPy in our production environment. We benchmark the Hummingbird, which is a POC of Golang implementing Swift. Uh, it's, uh, it, it 
played better than the PyPy. But none of them resolve the issue completely because they don't bring any change to the underlying architecture of the replication engine. The issue will, will appear when the number of objects goes to very big. So um, we decided to design and implement a new storage engine for small files. That is the blob engine. So I'm going to go over the whole design and implementation. Let's see. Actually, the idea of blob, blob engine comes from the several existing systems. I call them the blob store systems. They, they do share some common design. For example, they merely design for binary object storage. So that means there will be, there will not, not many update, uh, update operation on the object. And the small files will be packed into a big file, which is uh, called a volume file in Haystack, but a log in Embry from the linking. Besides, a file handle will, with encoding metadata will be returned to the user after uh, the object is saved. The, so the user has to keep the file handles. The object will be inaccessible without the file handle. What the prop system tries to do is um, reduce the random I.O. at best. Besides, there are actually several existing blob systems. Besides the haystack from F Facebook and Embry from LinkedIn, uh, FastDFS is uh, from China, and TFS is from Alibaba. C8FS is an uh, open source implementation of haystack in Golang. You can, you can fetch the code in GitHub. The architecture of those systems are, are similar. They typically are distributed for tolerant. There will be a central lightweight metadata server to locate the object. And data will be positioned in data servers. And file handle with encoding information will be returned to user. So before a user try to uh, Write an uh, object. Uh, you you cannot. You, you don't know the what the file handle like looks like. File handle looks like. Uh, we can see that the architecture is uh, is really not comple complex. Every time uh, the client uh, want to access an object, uh, no matter read or write, he need to uh, communicate with the meta server to. Uh, to ask the meta server where is this object located. After he get the the uh, message, he will uh, communicate with data service directory. Uh, it should be mentioned that the the meta server is very lightweight. It just the mail the main purpose of the metadata server is just for locating. So he, typically, you you work. Uh, it works well most of the time. And sometimes uh, the meta server will be also be uh, a distributed system itself. So it can prevent the single point of failure. Load, um, there are many existing systems, but uh, it's really not easy to port them to Swift. First, uh, there's no centralized meta servers in Swift. As we know that uh, the nodes in Swift are typical equivalent. And you definitely cannot return a file handle to the user because that's not, not how Swift works. Uh, as we know, to achieve the eventually consistency, the Swift replicator uses a file path based uh, algorithm to detect the, if the replicas 
are consistent, consistent or not. And, but in blob engine, there's, uh, there's no such uh, informative uh, path structure. Also, the Swift API support customize object meta data anytime. This means uh, we need a flexible and, inf and efficient uh, solution to ma manage uh, the metas. <laughs> and finally, the WSGIS multiple process works models bring some extra effort to coordinate the concurrently write access to the volume files. So how do we overcome those um, problems? Yeah, like, just like some other blob uh, store systems, we save the objects into a volume files. We use a embedded key value database to measure the meta. There will be only one key value database in a uh, disk and multiple volumes. Uh, the design, is, uh, the design ensures that the blob engine will continue to work with disk failure. Uh, about objects located, we know that in replication engine, <coughs> The partition, the partition number will calculate from the object ID. Then the system will look up the device with the partition in the ring files. But that's not enough in blob engine because there, uh, the, there is actual information required. For example, the path of the volume file, the offset, and the size of the, the object. So to make the design simple, we map each partition to a volume, and we save the offset and size in the database. And no, no, more, no, more, no more data is, uh, no more data position is required. So you can see that now we can locate, it, locate the objects without modifying the existing ring mechanism. We, we designed the replicator based on the existing object replicators. But since there's no such informative path structure in Blob Engine, so we mock it in the key value database. Um, instead of using the object ID as the key in the database, we use the path structure as a key. And now we can mark the list behavior with the prefix API of the, of the data, database. About volume compaction, typically it uh, is, uh, the deleted, the deleted space will not be released immediately when handling the deleted requests. Uh, they typically will be reclaimed later by some background service. And what existing blob system do is uh, copy, scan the whole volume file and copy them into temporary volume files. After all, the data, after all the files are scanned in the original volume files, the temporary will replace the original one. Uh, we use the same idea, but we, instead of create a temporary volume file, we use the in place copied. And we copy the valid file at the same volume file and then punch uh, holes in the volume files. This uh, idea, uh, actually came from Lomas, comes from Lomas design, so I owe you a beer. Uh, but uh, our design is uh, slight differently, different, slightly different. Our design ensures that there will be only one file hold in the volume file. Here, the, the diagram will show how it works. 
first time you will move the validator file at the end of the volume, and you will ignore the delete needles, and then punch a continue host at that. <clears throat> this will, will, will be it's a, it's very simple to implement, and there was no such, uh, there's no need to implement a complex uh, controls logic. Okay, so um, about the implementation, we implement our design on Hummingbird. That's the Go implemented script. There are several reasons. First, uh, we want to reduce the latency as most as possible. Then, and secondly, we want to avoid the multi uh, process model of whiskey. We go, we can handle each request on, on a Go routine. We use LogDB as uh, the key value database, but I believe it works for any, for any other embedded, for, for many other key value databases such as LevelDB or BoltDB. Uh, at the initial phase, we leverage the code of audit and replicate. The Python code will communicate with the Go part codes through the gRPC. <clears throat> Next, I will show some benchmark results produced by SS Bench. The SS Bench scenario simulated 200 uh, concurrent users, and uh, the ops of the right and lead are equal. Are equal. And the test uh, run ran against a cluster with 12 nodes. Uh, this is the average light latency. We can see that uh, almost uh, an order of magnitude uh, improvement uh, could be gained. And the situation is uh, similar in the 19 percentile calculation. Uh, the gap uh, between of the real latency is close, but the broadband is still better. Yeah, similar in 19th percentile real latency. <clears throat> so uh, about low map, uh, we plan to implement the whole blob engine, including the audit and replicator we go. And some operation tools such as uh, meta backups, meta backups and, and volume file recovery are needed so to, to make the data as reliable as possible. Also, we want to improve the large file Currently, before the files uh, is before the files are positioned are saved to the disk, it will be held in a buffer in the memory. We also want to add some performance probe in the code so we can monitor the system itself. So I guess um, this. Uh, all for the session, and let's check the summary. First, we introduce the motivation. Uh, why do we optimize script? And then the design and implementation of the blob engine is exempt. Finally, it's a saw introduction on the roadmap. So you can reach me by Twitter. Um, so any question? Um, hello, uh, thank you for your talk. You told us that you have one volume per partition. Yeah. Uh, how do you handle concurrency? We are, okay. So because we use uh, Go, we use Hummingbird, so that means all the process, the request handles will run in the same process. So we use the a lock, we use the common lock to lock the volume file before the handle append the object at the end of the volume. So 
Any other question? Okay, so thanks again for your attending. So nice to meet you. Thank you.